Okay, it's Friday and it's time for Ask the Rabbi. This is the uh, video that Ray Cheetah wanted. Um, we're going to talk about kosher. And before we begin to talk about kosher and what is kosher and what is not, we have to first look at the word in Hebrew for kosher, which is kashrut or kashrut, depending on how you pronounce it as an Ashkenaz or a Sephardic Jew. Uh, kosher, kashrut, uh, is, um, means acceptable or appropriate. It also means clean, but in most cases, um, in, it's in reference to uh, appropriateness. Uh, it covers more than just food, although kosher, primarily most people outside orthodoxy sees, um, thinks kosher, thinks food. Uh, it also covers what you wear, um, uh, how you live, and a number of other things, and we'll get into that. But today's uh, kosher will be involving food. I'm going to put a link over here um, uh, explaining what is kosher and what is not, and I'm just going to briefly explain um, three of the most interesting questions, or the three most common questions that are asked. Um, first, uh, why can't we eat pork or um, cr uh, crustaceans like lobster and shrimp and crab and what have you? And there's a lot of uh, explanations. Uh, the, the Torah just says that you can't eat it. Um, many of the sages, and um, you could, uh, I'll put over here Farashi and a number of other ones, uh, but you can also, on the, on the website that I'm going to put here, it'll probably give you a little bit of an explanation. But here's the short answer. It goes back to the old phrases, what you, you know, you are what you eat. Um, most animals, if you look at the total list of foods that are inappropriate to eat, uh, most of the animals in question, you wouldn't normally eat monkeys. For example, you know everybody has a uh, a famous speaker once said, "We all have a we're all obeying kosher. It's just that we have different lists than God has." But the reason is that if you look at pigs and shrimp and um, other animals that are inappropriate to eat, not kosher to eat, um, those animals are scavengers, um, animals that eat ex excrement. You know, like um, most shrimp and crab are what they refer to as bottom feeders. Those animals actually have a purpose. They're, they're the world's filter, the ocean's filter. It eats the stuff that no other animal eats, uh, like fish and so forth. It keeps the oceans clean. So in a way, not eating shrimp and crab and all those other things, uh, because it, we're actually raping the sea, obviously, because we keep eating more shrimp and crab than anybody else next to the uh, Japanese. Uh, we're, we're basically eating the world's filter, and that has repercussions in the world. Um, pork, most pigs, I mean, there are some arguments that if you look at pigs genetically, they're very close to humans. There's always the discussion, I've, it's very rare, but I've, I have heard of discussions that, you know, we're basically causing a form of cannibalism, genetically speaking. But the, my reasoning, and if you asked me, it would, it would not be that answer. The answer would be that we don't eat animals that eat other animals and cause murder, i.e. we don't eat fox or wolf. We only eat, uh, you know, deer, for example. And we'll go into the preparation of killing an animal in another video. Um, and also, uh, you know, we eat cow. These are mostly vegetarian. All the animals that are listed are vegetarian animals. They're animals that eat vegetables. They don't eat other animals. So we, you know, how we approach being, you know, eating food has more to do with how the animal has lived. And then, of course, how the animal has been um, killed. Many mo modern Orthodox Jews uh, choose to become vegetarian because it's a very complicated thing. We can't also, Jews are not, it's inappropriate to eat animals that have suffered in death or have been sick or have been killed like in roadkill, for example. Any animal that has been struck by a car, we can't eat. Um, uh, e even though deer is kosher, uh, the animal, if it's shot and it runs away, it's actually felt pain, so we can't eat it. So a lot of Jews, a lot of modern Orthodox Jews, and I know a number of them, uh, choose to be to be uh, vegetarian because of this, uh, because it's just too complicated, and we really don't want to live in um, in conflict with God's rules. The next, um, milk and meat. Why can't a Jew, an Orthodox Jew, or why won't an Orthodox Jew, I should say, it's a choice, uh, eat a cheeseburger? 
um, cheeseburgers because it goes back to um, the practice of Baal and Moloch. If you, uh, maybe I'll put it up here. Uh, some of you guys who are into um, the theories of the New World Order or whatever, you know a lot of these guys go to Bohemian Grove and they um, worship Moloch, which is an owl. That's where you get this, by the way. The owl, the wise old owl. In ancient times, Babylon, um, there was a practice amongst Baal worshippers, primarily, and Moloch worshippers, um, which was this. In the spring harvest, they would take live children and boil them alive in their mother's milk. That's why it says don't I'll have a kid, meaning a goat, child goat, not a human kid, uh, boiled in its mother's milk. So to remember that this was a practice of Molech, and also it's just inappropriate, regardless of whether it's a human or another animal, that you would, you would, you would basically eat an animal with its mother's milk. Now, of course, with mass production, there's no way you can tell that the cheese that you have in your, in, in your refrigerator is from the same from the mother of a cow that made your hamburger but to prevent this from happening we choose not to um put put cheese on any mammal i don't uh, thirdly uh there is the big question of chicken chicken is foul chicken is kosher uh but many jews because when sometimes when chicken is prepared uh it looks like beef you know ground turkey and chicken so they choose that they're not being seen as committing uh, a sin choose not to eat milk and chicken or fowl chicken turkey duck goose whatever um in my house i know it's a chicken i'm alone i will put i will have chicken and and uh and milk with my animal with my my meal um, early on, in the early centuries, um, there was no problem. The rabbis had uh, chicken and milk sauce and what have you. Uh, it happened later on because people were questioning, you know, oh, is that, is that a beef or is that chicken? So to, to solve that problem, uh, they decided to add uh, chicken to that list. Uh, I do not do that when friends of mine come over because that's a stumbling block and that's also a sin and that's not kosher. Um, but primarily, um, I have no problem with it in my own home. I will not, and I do not, uh, uh, cook milk and any mammal, uh, whether it's beef or buffalo or whatever. Any animal that lactates will not be brought together with cheese. Um, uh, as far as, well, I guess I should go into, while I have the time, uh, animals cannot, be su cannot suffer. Uh, when when they're when they're dying when, when they're being slaughtered I mean that's kind of an oxymoron that's why a lot of Jews are practicing kosher by being vegetarian basically there's a huge rule of what they call a shukit uh, which means the to cut the animal from ear to ear and let its blood drain and let it die that way and that seems to be the most um, uh, painless way of killing an animal and it doesn't suffer and there's another word that you're going to learn in the Hebrew. It's glatt, G-L-A-T-T. -T. It means clear. What they used to do in the ancient times, and they still do today, is that once they've killed an animal, they checked its lungs. They, they checked its, its internal organs when they're butchering the animal to see if there's any blood in the, in the, in the lungs. Because normally, if an animal suffers, it will it'll contract and it will cause blood vessels to burst in the lungs. And that's the difference between regular kosher and when you ever hear the term galat kosher, if you live in the city. Uh, galat kosher means that, that the rabbi that oversaw the, the uh, slaughtering of the animal saw that the animal did not suffer and it based it on the lungs. So this is a short, brief thing. And uh, kosher number two, kosher number three will go into uh, clothing and then also uh, other things like sexual relations and marital relations. So. Um, if you have any questions, comment and I'll try to fill in the gaps that I missed. So uh, until next time, Shabbat Shalom and uh, peace.